Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to be discussing basics of functions. Let's start with an example. So we have a function, it's given by this formula, f of x equals two minus x, all divided by two plus x. And the question is to compute f of one, f of two, and f of a plus two. Let's carefully work through this solution. So to compute f of one, we start by writing down f of one. So f of one. And basically what you do now is you look at your function f of x, and everywhere you see an x, you put a one instead because x has the value one. Basically we're evaluating f of one. That's what people say. So this is going to be two minus, and instead of x, it's one over, and then here we have two plus one. Now we just have to be careful that we don't mess up. Two minus one is one, and then two plus one is three. And so that would be f of one. f of one would be equal to one third. What does this mean? Let me just show you. The question doesn't ask, but it's, this is really useful knowledge. This actually means that the ordered pair, so x is one, one and comma one third, that's the y coordinate, your x and y, this means is on the graph. All right, so if you were to graph this function, this would be an ordered pair. This, this point would be on the graph of this function. Kind of cool. All right, f of two. Let's find f of two. So again, we look at f of x, and everywhere there's an x, we put a two. This will be two minus two over, and then on the bottom we have two plus two. Two minus two is zero. And then we have a four on the bottom. And then so zero over four is zero. Whenever you have zero up top, you're always gonna get zero, as long as you don't have zero on the bottom, which, <laughs> which is no good. Um, so two minus two is zero, two plus two is four, so zero over four is zero, and that would be it. And the question didn't ask, but since I've started the trend, <laughs> I'll continue it. It means that the ordered pair two comma zero is on the graph, so two comma zero is on the graph. Really useful to know stuff like this. It's, it's very important. The last one is f of a plus two. Let's do that one, f of a plus two. So here's where sometimes people will get confused because it's not just a number, it's a plus two. Um, so basically, it's, that's your x. Your x is a plus two. So instead of x, you have a plus two. So it's two minus parentheses a plus two. Notice the parentheses are there. Very important because we're subtracting and we're gonna to have to distribute a negative one. On the bottom it's two plus parentheses a plus two. You don't need the parentheses on the bottom because there's really a one here. And so when you distribute it, nothing's gonna happen. But here there's a negative one, so it is gonna change the sign. That's two, then negative one times a is negative a, and then negative one times two is negative two. Over, and on the bottom we have two plus, and then just a plus two. Let's see what happens here. The twos cancel. We get negative a over, and then we get a plus four. And so that would be the y value when x is equal to a plus two. And so if you're curious, it would mean that the point a plus two, comma, negative a over a plus four is on the graph. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, really nice. Let's go ahead and do uh, a different type of example involving functions. In this example, we are going to find the domain of each function, and we have two parts, part A and part B. Let's start with part A. We have f of x equal to three x over x squared minus four solution. So the domain of the function is the set of all the x values that you can plug into your function that makes sense. So typically there's two situations where they don't make sense that you see, and that is when you're dividing by zero, like in this example here, or when you have square roots, like in part B over here. So everything will make sense in the numerator because you can take a number and you can multiply it by three, so three x will always make sense. And the bottom makes sense too, except when you combine them and create a fraction, that's when you have an issue. So you can't have zero on the bottom. What we're going to do is we're going to start this problem 
by taking the bottom, which is the denominator, and setting it equal to zero to find out what x values can't we have in our domain. So I'm setting it equal to zero to find out what's not allowed. This is pretty easy to solve. You can add the four or you can factor. I'm gonna add the four. And then when you take the square root of both sides of this, because you're taking the square root of a variable squared, you're going to get a plus or minus. Okay, so you're gonna get plus or minus two. So the domain is all numbers except these. Okay, so it's every single number except plus or minus two. So the domain is all numbers, all real numbers, except x equals plus or minus two. Now, if you want to write this in interval notation, you could. You could do that. Let me show you how to do it. It's pretty easy. So here's, here's a number line. Okay, and then here's negative two, and here's two. And so the domain is everything except negative two and two. And so what you do to exclude these numbers is you put these opposing parentheses like this. And then you can read the answer off the screen. Negative infinity to negative two. Union, negative two to two. Union, and then two to infinity. You take the union of all these little intervals, and that gives you the interval notation for the domain. Let's do part B. Part B is a little bit easier. So in part B, you have to think about square roots. Uh, in order to get a real number, we can't take the square root of a negative number. So t minus three can't be negative. So what we do here to find the domain is we take t minus three and we set it greater than or equal to zero. So whenever you have a square root, you always do that, okay? You just take whatever's inside your square root and set it greater than or equal to zero. You add three to both sides, and so we get t greater than or equal to three. The domain is all values of t such that t is greater than or equal to three. You could draw a picture and write it in interval notation. So here's the number line, here's three, and it's all the numbers greater than or equal to three. So it's all this red stuff here. And what you normally do is when you include things, you use a bracket. So the answer in interval notation would be bracket three to infinity. And that would be the domain or part B. These are the two classic examples of finding domain where there's issues. The first one is a fraction. Just make, find out where it's equal to zero on the bottom and then just throw away those numbers. The second one was a square root function. Just take whatever's inside the square root and set it greater than or equal to zero. Hopefully you've learned some math in this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out more videos on Chegg. Until next time, good luck.